we are dealing with the basics of environment. So, the very nitty gritty smaller questions that have been coming from the theoretical aspect of it is a 2022 question which asks us which of the following are nitrogen fixing plants? Alpha, alpha, amaranth, chickpea, clover, purslin. Okay. So, we're looking at all of these options and they're asking which is nitrogen fixing. The one option that you can be sure of is maybe you will have three because why it belongs. What is nitrogen fixing plants? It's any of those plants which belong to your pea family, which is primarily your Fabacea family. So, in that it will all come. So, chickpea, yes. Okay. So, let's look at the options which has chickpea. It's 1, 3, 4, 1, 3, 5 and 6. So, 1 is also confirmed. Now, we have to see if it's 4, 5 or 6. Okay, there is a sixth option also which is spinach. Okay, sorry. Sixth option which is spinach. Now, when you look at all of these options, it becomes quite clear. See, we've been eating spinach, but then spinach is always considered to be rich in iron and everything. But nothing about nitrogen fixing does come in place over there. And spinach is, does not belong to your pea family. So, if I'm to eliminate 6, the only answer is 1, 3 and 4. So, out of all of this, alpha, alpha, chickpea and clover are your nitrogen fixing plants. The answer to this question is A. The next we have a 2021 question. The question reads as, which of the following are de detrivorous? Detrivorous are those organisms that are feeding on dead and decaying matter. Okay. So, let us have a look. They have mentioned earthworms, jellyfish, millipeds, seahorse, wood lice. Okay. Which option can I like very easily maybe eliminate? We are looking at something that has the ability to decompose. Right. When you look at organisms like your seahorse and jellyfish and all that, they are known to be feeding on other organisms like smaller algae, smaller fish, etc. So, they cannot be in the role of your detrivores because if you are doing one thing which is decomposing and eating the decaying matter, that is your niche in the ecosystem. That is your role in the ecosystem. So, when you look at it, earthworm has to be there in our answer. Seahorse might not be there in our answer. So, any option which has seahorse, we have our answer which is 1, 3 and 5. Earthworms, millipeds and wood lice. So, jellyfish and seahorses do not have a role in dead, eating up the dead decaying matter. So, the answer to your question is C. Next, we have a 2021 question. The question reads as, consider the following kinds of organisms, copepods, cyanobacteria, diatoms, Foraminifera, which of the above are primary producers in the food chains of oceans? If you look at all of the options, you are looking at just two of it. So, out of four, you need to know which of the two can be primary producers. So, out of the four listed here, uh, two of them primarily belong to a category of organism called as phytoplankton which are microscopic algae that are photosynthetic in nature. And those two are cyanobacteria and diatoms. Cyanobacteria is otherwise called as blue-green algae and diatoms also. Both of them are examples of phytoplanktons that have the ability to produce their own food. Copepods and foraminifera feed on smaller phytoplankton, feed on smaller, uh, in, what you say, aquatic organisms, etc. So, your answer to this question is 2 and 3, B, 2 and 3. Next, we have a 2021 question which reads as, in case of which one of the following biogeochemical cycles, the weathering of rocks is the major source of release of nutrient to enter the cycle. So, if you look at carbon and nitrogen cycle, these are primarily gaseous cycles. So, you will not have weathering of rocks as the major source for these both. You have phosphorus and sulfur. In both phosphorus and sulfur, weathering happens. But in phosphorus is where the major source is only weathering. In sulfur, you do have other sources also. But in phosphorus, it's mostly just weathering that contributes it to the 
a phosphorus cycle so the answer to this question is c phosphorus cycle we have a 2021 question which reads as which of the following have species that can establish symbiotic relationship with others nidarians fungi protozoa so when it comes to this particular question i want you to understand nidarians are primarily those organisms which are your jellyfish corals etc and we know corals have a symbiotic relationship with your zooxanthellae your jellyfish also has a very a symbiotic relationship with another algae called as dino flagellite then when it comes to your different kinds of fungi i just told you fungi and algae form your lichens when it comes to your protozoa also i had told you protozoa represents a lot of organisms like for example your wood eating cockroaches protozoa also has a lot of symbiotic association with your different kinds of bacteria etc so now when it comes to this all three of them are capable of having symbiotic uh, relationships with other organisms so here your answer is d 1 2 and 3 next we have a 2017 question which reads as due to some reasons if there is a huge fall in the population of species of butterflies what could be its likely consequences pollination of some plants could be adversely affected maybe there could be a drastic increase in the fungal infections of some cultivated plants it could lead to a fall in the population of some species of wasps spiders birds okay so they are saying there is a huge fall in butterfly population butterfly population butterfly has something to do it has a function which is pollination so pollination will get affected first option will be happening so let's see all the options which has one lead the second option look at the third one it can lead to a fall in the population of some species of wasp spiders and birds what are wasp spiders and birds these are maybe those animals that are eating the butterfly so when the butterfly population decreases their population will also decrease so yes three can also be there now when you look at two there is no direct correlation between butterfly population and fungal infection of plants so <laughs> it is two as very mutually exclusive things which are there the answer to this particular question so is just 1 and 3 it is c 1 and 3 only so 2014 question the question primarily reads as the most important strategy for the conservation of biodiversity together with the traditional human life is the establishment of that means they are looking at protection of the biodiversity but not by restricting the people it is by combining them also so it's biodiversity with your humans so when you look at all the options over here in your national park you create you protect the biodiversity but people are regulated in your wildlife sanctuary you protect the biodiversity but people are regulated in your botanical garden the biodiversity itself is taken to a different area and preserved over there but when it comes to a biosphere reserve what happens is you have different areas for example a large biosphere reserve is divided into a core area a buffer area and a transition area so what happens is you can have your human population in your transition area doing their smaller livelihood activities which are not harmful to the environment so the answer to this particular question is a biosphere reserves the next we have a 2014 question so if we have just solved that you would know what is going to be you know the roughly the answer of this which one of the following is the correct sequence of a food chain and then they are showing all of these options which is first of all look at the three organisms which are there diatoms crustaceans and herrings and the only two options where diatoms are starting so i told you diatoms are producers so it's these two options now coming to crustaceans and herrings herrings are bigger fish okay 
Crustaceans are much more smaller organisms which are shelled. It's primarily shrimp, smaller krill, etc. So, the right answer over here is diatoms, crustaceans and herrings. Option A.